Hello and welcome to the new beginner tutorial. First of all, um, I wish you a happy new year. Um, this is the first tutorial in year 2022. So I welcome you all. First of all, um, on my homepage there's currently like a little project update with the flower I did. Um, you can follow me on Twitter and here's like an exclusive preview on the next January Patreon tutorial and a reminder to all my Patreons on the Patreon December video. So basically the flower tutorial for, for that one here um, is out. So you can look at it. Cool. So what I want to do today with you all, um, basically geometry manipulation, or like the first, um, your first exploration, um, in this in Houdini with uh, polygons or points, lines, etc., and how you can basically manipulate or form um, this place geometry in really simple ways. So let's get started. So first of all there's like a little setup. So we will build that here um, quickly. So there are several ways to do that. S um, geometry manipulation or displacement or forming new geometries or kind, um, kind of new forms. Um, so what we want to do, let's get out of here. Um, we will place a new geometry container here. So we will build up our um, new node trees in there and let's just call it geo r &D. And we will dive inside with double click, hit the tab key and now we can start again. Um, for example, we can start with a simple sphere. Let's start with a really simple sphere here. And with the sphere, let's make it a polygon. Let me just close origin here. Um, let's get a simple polygon here and go on smooth wire shade. And now you can see the sphere um, got like 80 uh, polygons or primitives so the resolution is, is not that high and we can dial up basically the resolution with the frequency slider here so you can see now we will dial up the resolution so I think a really first and simple way to manipulate uh, geometry or to displace them is noise so I think we'll start with that. Um, there's a node, for example, called mountain, the mountain node. Um, now let's place down also a null node to get uh, organized here. So for example, this will be our in um, geo. So we can swap that for um, different inputs. And after that, we will we will place our um, mountain node here. And now you can already see we displace basically our sphere in in that way with a noise. Um, it's currently the simplex noise, um, but you can also get, for example, the flow noise. So you can play around with um, with the noises here. And of course, you can subdivide it for example 50 times or 150 times so get a frequency higher and you can already see when you dial up the frequency you will get a lot more um, geometrical detail and that's really nice so you can play here with the noises um, you can play with the element size for example this is pretty cool here um, you can play with the octaves, the scale, so for example in one axis and you will end up with something like that, but you would need a lot more geometry to like, get that, yes, for example, then you will achieve something like that. Um, another thing, oh, four, yeah, what you can do, you can basically make them 
a little bit bigger. And then you can again go through each noise here and get a look how the noise will look with a different scale. Then of course with the element size you can play with the offset. So you can basically offset the noise to a certain value. Then you can play with um, with post processing, with folding and uh, complement, gain, bias, etc. So you will, for example, with folding you will end up with this like um, organic shape, but with pretty hard cuts here. So I think that's also pretty interesting. Um, I think what's cool in that kind of situation. If you got like a sphere here, let's go a little bit lower on the resolution. If you got like a sphere here and extend the sphere a little bit out and ma maybe make it a little bit thinner or decrease the thickness. Um, and then let's go for 0 0.5. And the scale, well let's change the element size a little bit. And what you can do after that, you can for example clip the whole thing. And then what you can do, you can copy like the direction, get a mirror here, and paste relative reference, and you will basically get this um, kind of hot surface organic shape already. And then you can, for example, build up on top of that. So this is like the first um, little tree here. Um, Another thing um, to do is to build up your own noise, of course. Um, and you can do that with place down, so press tab again and place down a WAP, an attribute WAP, for example. And let's just call that um, create noise. And hook that up to the first input here. And now let's reset our sphere. And now what you can do, you can dive inside with a double click into the web node and um, maybe when you dive in the first time it's a little bit overwhelming um, because you got a lot of um, inputs and some outputs. But for noise we will not need um, many of those. Of course you can use them if you know um, what you're doing, but for now we will use a simple noise. So when you press tab in here you will get uh, the WAP uh, menu basically with your notes you can place in here. And there's a category called noise and here you got some um, noises. Um, for example the anti alias noise, the unified noise, I think those are pretty common and the curl um, noise is also pretty nice. So you can play around with those. But for now let's go for example the unified noise static and those are basically the same um, noise subcategories uh, you will find on um, the mountain node. But the cool thing is we can uh, manipulate them a little bit further and play around with our sphere here. So for example when you place that down you will get a lot of in inputs here. But we only need cur um, currently the position, so we will get the position from our sphere, feed that into the position from the noise, and for example you can feed the noise output into the color. And you will end up with something like that. Now you can play, for example, with the noise type here. But now we want to displace that. And to do that you can use a displace um, along normal. And what we will need is the position. Pipe that into the position. 
and then we need a uh, amount and the amount is um, basically our noise so let's pipe the noise into the amount and you will see we now successfully displaced our, our sphere here the cool thing is what you can do for example you can ramp the whole thing so what I mean by that is we can get um let's get a bounding box so a bounding box and with the bounding box we can basically create a gradient um let's go vector to float so we so we will convert the vector to float values let's just cut that here and let's have a look to the color so we will get a gradient um, on the x-axis on the y-axis and on the z-axis for example and we can use that to influence our noise so for example I want to start on with the noise on the top of the sphere and then mm, let it fade out over the y-axis so we can just get here our second component and pipe that into scale and now you can see our noise uh, got a, a much larger scale or much uh, larger um, displacement or a greater displacement on the top and will fade out here completely basically on the bottom the cool thing is what we can do we can ramp that whole thing so get a ramp parameter get that um, ramp to spline ramp pipe that in here and you will see nothing we will dive up one level and now you got a ramp here you can control and now you can basically influence your um, your noise or your noise uh, distribution or scale with that ramp and uh, that's already pretty um, pretty powerful so now you've got a ramp to control it another thing what I like to do or what you can do is get like a tr um, let's get a geonomagic function here pipe that into here let's get first on then pipe up the, the frequency and now you can pipe that into scale and have a look and you will end up with something like that so you can play around with that you can animate for example oh yes let's animate the offset so we will get another new component here the time for example and now when you dive up and let's decrease here a little bit the resolution and hit the play function um, you will see this noise will evolve um, over time for example so that's also pretty cool and pretty simple of course you can then play around with different axes nice so you can use for example this um, trigger uh, on a metric function or you can use the ramp then there is more of course um, you can play with um, with the noises here let's just quickly disable the scale here so value noise sparse convolution alligator then the Perlin so Perlin, then Perlin flow, simplex and you can um, easily um, manipulate them further for example the frequency we can get a constant and for example pipe that up and you will get a lot more smaller um, scale details or you can go like 0 0.5 and you will end up with a much larger pattern of the noise 
And for example, this currently, I think the cellular F1, yes, you can use that, for example, for, um, I think those are pretty nice for uh, generating procedural rocks, especially with like a larger scale. And then you can just um, simply uh, get like the time um, value um, into the offset and cache like 20 rocks out and further um, introduce detail. Um, for further detail, what you can do, let me just pipe the resolution here up again a little bit. What you can do, you can enable the fractal type to, for example, hybrid terrain, and you will get a, a much more detail here. Then you can play with the roughness. Um, you can also use other kind of um, fractal types, for example, the standard or the um, terrain type. So you can use them, for example. Cool. Then let's go for another thing. Let's just do some copy stuff. So let's copy the whole tree here. <laughs> so just two simple <laughs> nodes. And let's go for lower resolution. And now what I want to do, I want to basically scatter points onto our sphere. And we can do that with the scatter sub and connect it. And what we can do here we can get like, let me just enable here, let's get a little bit bigger on the, on the points. Um, what we basically will do with the scatter node, we will scatter points on the surface of the sphere. So for example, let's go for 15 points and let's disable the relax iteration. And what we can do now, let's go back here. What we can do now, we can copy on the, this point. So let's get um, a copy um, to points. What we can do here, we will, for example, can copy our rock. Let's go a little bit. 50. Um, we can copy, for example, our rock onto here. And now with our attribute randomize node, we can quickly randomize, not the color, so the color is basically a default value. We can quickly randomize the n, the normal, inside a sphere. And after the attribute randomize, we can place down a float an attribute adjust float with p scale. Um, on the adjustment uh, value, we will do operation initialize, so set initial and then random. And then we can basically play with our p scale here, and the p scale will determine or influence the scale with the copy the points. So you can see now we got some smaller and larger rocks. And what you can do after that on VDB conversion, for example, so VDB from polygons, pipe that down and uh, convert VDB. And with the VDB from polygons, we will basically create a surface volume out of voxels, so um, basically three dimensional pixels. And what we can do on the voxel size, pipe that down to, for example, 0 0.01, and we will get a much higher resolution and convert them back again to polygons. And now we got basically a fluent um, uh, mesh that is meshed together. Um, the cool thing is you can place nodes in here, so between this simple um, conversion, for example, the VDB um, reshape SDF. So let's pipe that between here. And you can use erode, for example, and erode your mesh to a, to a given value. So now you can see we will basically erode the mesh 
and you will end up with something like that. Another cool thing is what you can do now, you can Im um, change like the input. So for like a taller rock, you can just get two in here, let it cook, and you will end up with something like that. So I think that's um, that's also pretty powerful to use like um, copy to point functions to further uh, manipulate or basically first copy um, spheres or other kind of geometries. For example, you can not use a sphere here, use a subdivided box for example and you will get a other result. Another cool thing is what you can do now, you can get that noise from here, copy that onto here and we need um, less displacement and maybe a higher mm, maybe free a higher frequency and then you can add additional um detail to our rock as a simple example. Another thing I did um was like I think with the vellum brush yes Let's copy the whole thing again here. And we will start again with a simple sphere. And you can use, for example, simulation to create new types of um, geometrical forms. Um, a simple thing what I like to do is um, to get into the vellum brush. So for example, 50 here. Um, let's go vellum cloth, vellum configure cloth, and then we will need a vellum brush. And with the vellum brush, we can then already start. So get your show handle, um, just press basically enter. And the cool thing is what we can do with the vellum brush, we can now work manually on our geometry. And another cool thing is you can, for example, if you get a rock here, in here, um, you can basically work with the rock here. So reset state, reset all changes. You can work with this rock here. You, so you got now basically a hard surface object, but you freed it like a cloth object. Um, so, for example, let's manipulate that. Um, you can use different uh, modes here. For example, rotate. That's also pretty cool. To fully now distract that object so that it'll, it will not like look like a rock. For example like that. And the cool thing is um, you can basically place a null here and play then with blend shapes. So blend shapes, that one and that one. And now you can basically blend between both objects like a rocky object and then you blend it to the fabrical um, object. So that's just a little idea that you can do. Another cool thing is to work with um, pops. So basically particle simulation. Let's get that tree here. Uh, let's get another input. Um, I think I covered that in some of my tutorials. So let's go quickly on YouTube. Let's get to YouTube. And you can see, for example, pops here, the coral growth. Um, that's pretty cool. So you can play with that. Okay, so let's do it like a simple growth here. 
Um, let's get a circle here for the input. And placed on a pop network. And now we already can see we will scatter points on our circle. But I think what would be better, let's make another approach. We got here our our love layer uh, rock here. <laughs> and what we can do, let's let's get the rock here, let's manipulate that a little bit further, so like let's make it smaller a little oh whoa, that's would be too big. Let's make it smaller like that. Remesh the whole thing. Add some details. And then we will use that for our pop net. But I don't want to scatter the points all over my mesh. Um what I want to do, I want to scatter them in specific, maybe randomized areas. And what we can do, we can use our noise here, put that into the color. But what I want to do, I want to add light, like a second noise, so for example an anti-alias noise. Let's fit the range, because the anti-alias noise got basically a, an output from um, minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 and what I want to do is to ramp that you will see why in a second and I want to create a new attribute so bind export so bind export is when you want to export an attribute and bind is when you want to import an attribute and I want to name that attribute scatter let's copy that and dive here, let's get that to the CD. Dive up, let's make that ramp here. And let's give it oh, much more sharpness here. Now I'll place down a scatter. Check the density attribute and get the scatter here. And now you can see we uh, will only um, scatter points on the white areas here. So we can further make them smaller, for example. Let's increase the contrast a little bit or the sharpness. And now what I want to do, dive inside the pop net. And I want to use source, um, let's go for um, all points. And birth, mm, yeah, let's go for, mm, let's go for a simple dollar $FF equal equals one. So we will only, whoops, we will only emit points on the on the first frame, uh, basically. And now I have up here. And what we need to change currently, there is still, I think, the time in the offset. So let's disable that for now. Because we will then, um, each frame will generate the mesh basically new. And there's still that one here. So of course you can do that, for example, but that will increase our little simulation here, or or the time basically. So what we can do now is to get a force in here. Um, what I want is like a normal force maybe. So what you can do, um, get that, get into the create noise swap. And then the normal will be the velocity. And now you can see we've got on the points, we've got a new attribute, V. And on the source first input, on attributes, we will inherit the attributes. And the inherited uh, velocity is currently on scale on 1. And you can see we will already sh shoot like um, 
the points outwards. But there will be, I think, some collisions with the mesh. So now what we can do, we can use um, that mesh here as a collider. So out collider, basically our uh, VDB. And we can merge that in here. So we will need a static object. Pipe that in here. Go from uh, left to right, or you can just get here on um, mutual. Then a static object. We will need the subpath basically. So let's go for out collider and accept that. And with that, we've got now the collider in here. So we can use that as our collider. So then you can just check like here the displaced geometry. So uncheck it and go to the collision guide. And now you can see the resolution of our um, yeah of our collider is not the best. So what we will do volume sample. And the proxy volume will be our art collider. And now we'll get um, a really good um, collision geometry here. So dive up again. And now we can add some pop wind to get it a little bit 0 0.5. And then you can trail the whole thing to a certain, so connect as polygons, dollar f end. So this is basically the last frame here. And now you uh, trailed them successfully. And what you can do now, you can basically merge them. Oops, not that, that one here. And you got yourself like rocks with some trading outlines. So now you can render that out, for example. So you can already see, um, I think there are a lot of um, examples or um, now in, in that tutorial, simple ways to already create um, some nice um, geometries. And now you can start to render them so, for example, mm, let's render that a little bit. I want like to render those trails here with the rock. So let's create a null here. So out rock, and we will need a material. RS mat. And let's copy that now here, get it in here and call that outlines. So set the display flag to our RS mat and to the outlines. We will um, need to generate basically a new geometry container and call that geo lines. Dive inside. And now an object merge, press shift W, get up the little tree viewer and drag and drop the outlines into here, into this object. And now we successfully like imported our lines into a separated um, geometry container. Um, let's do more lines. I want more lines. Let's do more on um, 5,000. Let's um, re-simulate that. Yeah, that's better. Cool. So we got now 5,000 lines onto here. That will be a pretty chaotic render. But on the um, geo lines, we will already need to go to the Redshift OBJ tab to strands and render object as strands. Then to capsule, um, I don't need the tessellation subdivision for now and the global scale multiplier let's multiply that down a little bit 
So what we are basically told now on the geometry container, this is not um, like normal polygons, this is a line, a polygon mesh, and Houdini or Redshift need to render that as a line. Cool. So we got that and we got our little rock. Let's go for an RS, an, an material network. Um, let's call it RSNet and a uh, ROP network, our rendering network, RS out. So dive inside. Let's place a redshift node here and we will, or I will enable global illumination. Let's enable P3, ACES, and enable optics RT on supported GPUs. This is basically RTX acceleration and automatic sampling. That should be fine for now. Then we will need an RS material builder. Let's call that one RS rock and the other one um, RS line or lines. Cool. So for those both, let's quickly apply them. So go on the lines, go on render material. Let's get the material here, lines. And on that one, tree viewer, drag and drop the material in here. Um, Oops, not, in the, not into the group, into the material. Um, RS rock in here. Nice. And now what I also want to do, I want to give like the, the lines a gradient. So we can resample that. So the resample will um, basically re-subdivide or um, redefine our lines here. So you can see we've got a lot of resolution before and now we got a little bit of resolution, but we can change that by dialing here a smaller number into the length. So for example 0 0.025. And what I want to do is to enable the curve view attribute here. And the curve view attribute, if you go on the node info button and press the curve view, and then it should display here. Um, it's basically a ramp or a attribute that will sit on the point between um, 0 and 1. So that's pretty cool because you then can use um, your redshift material to generate like a color gradient on, um, on our lines. So hide all attributes um, and show curfew, so you can see here curfew 1 to 0. So this is our attribute. Nice. Um, we'll need a camera. Let's go for a simple camera here. Let's just use like mm, that composition. Um, And what you can do, I will go for more cinematic aspect ratio, then enable depth of field, copy parameter, paste relative reference on the focus distance, 0 0.1, and a bokeh image, let's get a bokeh image, F. bokeh images, let's get one here, cool. And um, on the bokeh image, I did a tutorial uh, on that on my YouTube channel. So just um, sh search Tim J. Um, I think Photography X Houdini bokeh image, <laughs> and you will um, you will get the the tutorial. So what I want to do now, well, let's go for six by six by seven. Let's go for six by seven. Um, or seven by six, that would be also nice. Yeah. What you can do, you can now, of course, manipulate here the focal length. So 
So I will use, for example, something like that. And now we need a light. <laughs> so I will basically place it on a, just a simple dome light here, or we can do a manual setup. RS on dome zero one, and let's go for a dome light. That one. So basically for an, for an HDRI. And now let's start the render. First of all, I will just start it on for the geo, and then I will enable the lines to see how the oh my god how the line um, scale will will look like. So this is now our little rock fully out of focus. So let's redefine our focus here and disable the background. And we got our render. Who, um, <laughs> what we then can do, let's disable that and disable the um, two lines here to have a look how the lines will look. Okay, now you can see basically the scale is um, a little bit too small. So we will go back in the Redshift OBJ and scale up our global scale multiplier here a little bit. Yeah, it's getting better. better. Let's go for 0 0.1. Uh, maybe 0 0.2 and let's get a rock in here nice so then what we can do um, now of course that's like a, a decision that you can make um, of course, that's now a really um, simple rendering here. Um, what you can do, you can, for example, get the rock material to white to go really uh, minimalistic and basically copy the same material in here. But we got our um, our curfew, if you remember, and we can use that now. So place down an RS user data color node and we want to import our curve U, so curve U. And we want to pipe that into our RS ramp so we can basically remap our color and you can pipe that into diffuse color. And now you can get like a preset here. And you can basically um, play around with um, with the values here, or you can go for like copper and don't pipe that into here. What I want to do is to pipe that into reflectivity, and then you can play around with with the gradient here. So, for example, a gradient from white to like a more I don't know maybe bluish look. Let's desaturate that a little bit because I think that was a little bit too saturated. And now what we can do, <laughs> let's go back on um, what we can do. Let's go here back out of the camera. What we can do, let me show you that. Um, we got here our lines. Um, let's just resample them here. And what I want to use is just like the endpoint. So curve view. Let's go for group group expression. Um, I will call that GRP and PTS for endpoints. Um, I got um, here a dollar OS, so the group name will basically um, the, will be the name up here. And on the vex expression, I will type at curve um, curve u equal equals one and go on points. Oh, zero. And now we got basically the endpoints, and we can blast. 
everything except the the endpoints. Or you can just use the scatter, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Sure you can also use uh the scatter node up here, but let's just use here. Yeah, it, it's basically the same with a little bit of offset. Let's use um those points right here. <laughs> oh my god. Um get a mass from geometry. This will be our um, reference geometry on points, and then our our rock here. And um, the cool thing is, whoops, let's switch that. Um, let's enable the mask here. points now we got a mask that we can use in our shading tab so let's go a little bit higher in the radius and of course yes you can just use the scatter here um, yeah it will basically be the same <laughs> so you can sometimes do extra work and it's basically completely bullshit because you don't need it um so now we got our material here um, with our new achieved mask attribute and we can use that. So dive up again, dive into the rock material. So now what I want to do, let's get the same thing here. So let's just copy our little material, get it in here and let's see if the mask attribute um, basically between 0 and 1 it should be yes so get here the mask whoops the mask now let's restart our render engine and now what you basically will see we can now pick up like like the color from the lines, show that onto our onto our rock geometry, and we successfully like got another detail on here. But I think that's too saturated on here. So of course you can uh, desaturate that, or what you also can do, look, you can link those two materials. And then another thing, you can increase like the detail. Of course, you can add a uh, um, geometrical detail, or what you can do, um, or some maximum noise. And pipe that into the surface. Let's have a look. Oh, that, these are the lines. Let's go for the rock here. Pipe that in the surface. Let's go for Luca. And another one. Let's go for the blistered dis turbulence. And I want to composite both nodes. Just, I think, average them out would be nice. Yes. And you can use that as a bump map. And of course that's way high to scale, so 0 0.001. Mm, let's go 0.5. And now you can see we already um, get a little bit more extra detail in here. And now you can play around, for example, the camera. Let's get another camera here with another aspect ratio. Um, maybe 
down here. Let's refresh that with the new camera. And now, for example, we can just focus on the lines, for example. Yes. To get this really uh, shallow uh, depth of field effect, of course, you can dial back the COC radius a little bit. Of course, you can play with the focus, but you can also play with the aspect. So, like from for an um, anamorphic uh, bokeh. Let's go back one here. Let's do five. And play, just play with the camera, play with the different angles. And I think you will find a few um, nice um, frames there. So. I hope uh, you liked that tutorial and if you want you can leave a comment um, or uh, write me on my homepage or via Instagram, Twitter, etc. Um, yes, so again, Happy New Year. I hope you liked that and I will see you in, in the next tutorial. So stay safe and take care.